2022 did not start on a very good note for all those people who aspire to become the permanent residents of Canada in the near future. The internal IRCC memo which came into public eye last week actually revealed that uh, the processing times might be very high uh, throughout 2022. Of course, it also revealed that uh, they might not conduct the all program draws in the next few months. And of course, when they conduct it, then the CRS cutoff scores might be really high above 500. Now, the key objectives of the Express Entry program, why it was actually created, was to attract the best talents from across the world so that they can contribute to the economic growth of Canada and process their applications pretty quickly in an express manner. So now, both of these objectives have been defeated. So is this the end of Express Entry system or is it actually heading towards its end? What is the Canadian government actually doing about it? What are the possibilities that things can start getting back better soon, at least in the next few months? And also, all those people who have been waiting, uh, now depressed with whatever has been happening, what should you do to get Canada PR in 2022? So hello friends, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and in this video we're going to talk about all of these different topics. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So of course we can clearly see that the purpose of Express Entry is being defeated here. Not attracting the best talents from across the world and of course very very slow processing times. So is Express Entry heading towards its end? I would say probably not. Yes, it's a dark patch in the program, in, the, in their timelines, but certainly it's not heading towards its end because the Canadian government is certainly doing something to improve the situation uh, and I will give some points in support of my answer here. So the internal ICC memo was actually from November 24th and since then we have seen a lot of developments that uh, have happened in the terms of uh, improving the application processing times because that is the core problem that they have right now. They have a huge backlogs, huge application processing times. They don't know which application to process first. Many people have been waiting for more than two years now. So November 24th was the date when that memo was uh, published. After that, in the mid of December, maybe two or three weeks after that, we got two developments that is on the positive side and I want to highlight those. First of all, the mandate letter that uh, came from Justin Trudeau to the Immigration Minister, it clearly highlighted that they desperately want to uh, work on the application backlogs. Then around the same time, the Canadian budget was announced and it had allocated $85 million to address the application backlogs to improve the processing times. So of course, when it is known, um, you know, up to the level of the Prime Minister that this is a concern and the uh, Finance Minister is allocating budget to it. Of course, things will take time, that budget allocation will take time, um, you know, planning will take time, how they would actually improve it. Everything would take it all, its own course of time. So you might actually see those changes coming into effect uh, maybe a few months from now, maybe, maybe March, maybe April. I don't know when, but uh, of course it will take its own course of time to reflect. But the Canadian government is aware about uh, these problems and they are taking some steps as well. Also, there was an article published on CICnews.com which talked about an interview of the Canadian Immigration Minister and he said that they are still looking for several options for the draws to be conducted for Express Entry 2022. So there might be a change in the strategy that might uh, be coming up. And also he talked about a strategy that I want to highlight here. He talked about conducting the express entry draws which might be based on certain occupations. So they might be conducting um, some express entry draws where they issue invitations to people from certain occupations only. And yes, because uh, we talked about certain changes coming into express entry last year where the complete NOC structure is being changed. So this is a possibility and of course when the immigration minister is talking about it then we can say that yes this is a chance. So all those people who are waiting in the express entry pool even if you have a score of 470 you never know if they conduct a draw which is occupation based and your occupation is in demand in Canada according to their uh, research then you can definitely get an invitation maybe 
uh, when they start actually conducting those draws. So while it is pretty obvious that things do not look pretty good in the near future, but you never know who gets lucky. Your occupation might get chosen to be in demand in Canada and uh, when they conduct these draws, you might get the invitations. Whatever it is, we'll get to know about it in the future. But of course, you have to be prepared for the worst, hope for the best. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, right? So in that case, what should you do? Okay, so now we know that things are not in good shape, but that is everything on the end of the Canadian government, IRCC, the application backlogs, all of that. And of course, you as a candidate in the express entry pool, you cannot do anything about it, right? So all those people who might be starting to give up on their Canadian dream, should you actually give up? I of course do not suggest you to give up on your Canadian dream. It might take time. Uh, maybe you initially thought that you might be in Canada in 2021. You might uh, come to Canada in 2023. But I suggest you don't give up. These are difficult times. Of course, do you remember when the pandemic just got started? Nobody knew what to do. Businesses had only one chance. Either they adapt or they perish. So most of the businesses actually adapted and you see all those businesses and so many people also, not just businesses, they have grown in the last two years, even with the pandemic. So of course, just like for the pandemic, you could blame that, okay, these people actually spread it. The government could not control it. Just like that, you can put the blame for, uh, you know, this mess on IRCC, the Canadian government or anyone else. But you have to adapt to the current situation to overcome the situation. What can you do about it? So I talked to Mr. Kubair Kamal, who's a licensed ICCRC consultant and also a very popular name in the world of Canadian immigration uh, because of his presence in social media. So he suggested few points. I'm going to walk you through that, but it's mainly around the, uh, you know, getting your PNP nominations and improving your score. So let's go through, uh, through that uh, conversation that I had with him and then we'll talk again. Uh, if you look at opportunities, Ontario has been looking to increase their PNP quota. So they, at this point of time, have about 8,250 of their immigration quota. They actually issued 9,000 nominations uh, in 2021, which was announced, I think, yesterday by their uh, on their website. So they actually took 750 applications or 750 nominations from this year's quota and, and gave it to the uh, applications from last year they have applied to double their quota so they had 8250 they have asked for 16500 uh, for their pnp quota similarly other provinces are also looking to increase their pnp uh, quotas or nomination quotas because provinces like nova scotia provinces like new brunswick have already put on record that they have achieved amazing numbers of, of population primarily because of the PNP uh, you know, programs that they run. So there has been an influx of in, uh, population there. It has been growing. It is helping them. So what I'm trying to say is that PNPs is going to be a big, big, big player in this year. People have to concentrate. Earlier, people were more uh, concentrating on your uh, express entry, but PNPs are now going to play a big role. If I mean, again, Ontario is, is a big player in the whole game. So if at all they get the increase in the quotas, a lot of people will be looking at that. Their general, uh, under the, the general draw under the human capital priorities where they announce, uh, I just, I think few days back, they gave away about 502 invitations to almost 18 different knock codes. That is a great one to keep an eye on. Tech program, again, a great one to keep an eye on. Now, Ontario is still stuck with a score of 467 as an upper cutoff because that was the last draw that happened, one point, last, one point less than the last draw that happened in 2020. So if there is no draw, the biggest benefit is going to happen to people who are in the brackets of 467 and less. I mean, otherwise in express entry, they did not have a chance. They did not have a realistic chance. So, you know, when one door closes, another door opens. So all these people who are at 467 low, they have this great opportunity, great chance with Ontario and will continue to have that. French, again, as an option will continue to be, I mean, will continue to play a big part. Again, if you can get into the Ontario French speaker stream, which is a very, very popular one. Again, 467 is a ploy there. But not only that, French adds uh, express entry points, of course. French adds uh, 10 points in Saskatchewan, up to 10 points in Saskatchewan score. French is also quite beneficial. Uh, Nova Scotia will, will probably look at applying uh, or the inviting people who can speak French. New Brunswick has a French speaker stream under their strategic initiative. 
so all these provinces are also looking at french as you know bilingual uh, francophones who they can invite so that is something which people must always keep in mind it's the cheapest option as a second option if you want to look at it as a backup plan after that study permits are are definitely something or rather study route is going to be something which will become more of a priority for a lot of people who are on the edge thinking should i go express entry should i go studying so i think studying is something which a lot of people will look at if at all you are choosing a study program be very very careful choose the right kind of program show the right kind of funds express the right intention show compelling reasons that you will indeed return back make a good application good sop uh, but also be mindful of chinook which is the artificial intelligence that is being used with the study permit applications but that primarily will be something which you need to look at but again coming back to pnps also keep in mind that pnps are always changing there is a new program always coming out Saskatchewan announced hard to find skills pilot. Uh, Alberta has just announced accelerated tech pilot or tech pathway. Uh, AIPP has become a permanent program. There is a new uh, municipal uh, pilot which is on the edge. I'm I'm sure they're going to be announcing it at some point of time. New Finland and Labrador announced a great program last year, uh, announcing people of all ages. You know there was no criteria of age. IELTS levels are very very low, and they invited about 600 people there. expecting them to do the same thing again so you have to always keep an eye on that new brunswick again great pnp program where they invite people under the uh, recruitment initiatives so yeah all these will be something which you can always keep an eye on keep your you know you know fingers crossed of course but uh, but also something to look forward to but these would probably be the solution that you would be looking for all right guys so the message is very clear of course these are not good times but it's not like nobody is doing anything about it The Canadian government is doing their part in uh, improving the express entry system and clearing the backlogs. It's time you do your part. Try for each PNP, whichever PNP you get. Do not think about the province. If you're getting a PNP nomination, just grab it. And of course, try your best to improve your CRS score because anyhow, if you improve your CRS score, whenever they conduct the express entry draws, maybe towards the end of this year. in the worst case scenario even then you would get the invitations if your score is let's say 490 or 500 so thanks a lot for watching this video guys if you have any comment and feedback please put them down in the comment section below and yes don't forget to click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video thanks again